limbs hang low, do they wobble to the flow? Can you tie it in a knot? Can you tie it in a bow? Can you throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Do your limbs hang low? <laughs> girl Carrie. Now aren't my children awful? They made up the song years ago when they saw uh, my large long mom boobs. They thought it would be funny to make a song. Now this video is for those of us that have had the life sucked out of them by their children where our once beautiful luscious full boobs have now become just squishy messes. But anyhow, today's video, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks for those of us that have larger breasts. Now, I'm particularly going to focus on the mom boob, but the tips and tricks will be helpful for anyone that has larger breasts. And the reason being is those of us that don't have mom boobs, that just have larger breasts, at least you still have some life, some density, some meat, some weight in your boobs. Mom boobs, on the other hand, are boobs that have been stretched every which way and you're just left with just a long mass of boob and you have to figure out how do I tuck all this stuff up? How do I harness it all and get it looking, you know, halfway decent? So that is going to be my focus uh, for today. What types of undergarments I wear to go from this, having my boobs hanging down low to here, to all the way up to here. Now let's start off by talking about mistake number one. Mistake number one is getting the incorrect bra size. Now for many, many years, I thought I was a 38 triple D. Yep, that's right. And the reason being is that I was trying to find a bra that would just actually fit my entire breast. But what I didn't realize was that one of the most important parts of getting your bra size right is your band width. And I was getting the band width wrong because I really was a size 34 in my band width, a 34 or 36, depending on the year and depending on how much I weighed at the time. But 38 was definitely not my band width. So what happened was, I would put on a bra similar to something like this and it would fit my breast, but then it would just ride up in the back. You know, how your bra just goes all the way up here and that's because the band width is too big and the weight of your breast is pulling down and so therefore the bra is coming up and you have an ill-fitted bra. And the reason we end up getting these um, ill-fitted bras or wrong sizes trying to fit our breasts in a cup is because most, uh, you know, retail stores or just mainstream stores do not go up to the sizes that we actually need to fit our breasts. So you need to go to like a specialty retailer and thanks to the internet now, you can find many sites that carry the sizes that we actually need. So my actual bra size as of today what my actual bra size is, is a 36i. That's right, a 36i. You might be saying, whoa, what kind of sizing is that? But the truth of the matter is, if you look at bras, like if you look at a size 32b, a 32b cup is going to be totally different than a size 40b cup. Because as the bandwidth, inc as the bandwidth increases, the cup size increases. And that makes sense because someone that's going to be wearing like a 32B is going to be a small, little petite uh, type woman or even a young girl. And someone that's wearing a size 40B is going to be a much, a person in much larger stature. And therefore the cup size is going to be bigger to match that bigger frame. So the number one thing we need to do is go get fitted, properly fitted for bra to figure out what our correct bra size is so that we can purchase the right size bra. Now your bra should not ride up in the back. It should actually go straight across the back and provide you know that support that you need to help lift and hold your girls up. And that's going to provide most of your support in your bra aside from the straps the backing of the bra. And you want it to be pretty wide on the sides. Now this particular bra does uh, fit that bill. You want it to be you know, wide so it can have that support and it can also uh, cover some of that 
you know, back fat and things like that and hold, hold you up and hold you in, be sure to go over to my website, verycarry.com, sign up because I will be sending out a bra guide newsletter so that you won't have to refer back to this video when you're trying to get all of the undergarments um, that you need. It'll have a bunch of this information condensed um, into a small little newsletter. Now, mistake number two is loose straps and not enough hooks or support in the back of your bra. So let's start off with the loose straps. Your straps on your bra should not be really, really loose. You should not be able to pull them way up in the air because if your bra straps are loose, your boobs are going to fall. They're going to, you know, just sag. So you wanna make sure that you tighten up those bra straps and most bra straps have a little you know um, adjustment in the back you want to pull it as far as you can without feeling uncomfortable you don't want the strap to dig into your skin but you want to be able to at least slide one fingers width underneath the bra strap and that'll uh, you know have the right amount of support and it'll lift that chest up and also you don't want to have super skinny Bra straps, when you have larger breasts, you want to make sure that you have at least a, a finger's width or finger's width and a half because what's going to happen when you have heavy breasts, that weight is going to push down into your shoulders. You might even see demarcations in your shoulders or your shoulder strap. If by any chance you cannot um, you know, find bra straps that are thicker. They do sell these like silicone, and some of them are actually fabric as well that you slip over your bra and it kind of distributes that weight to make a wider um, bra strap landing. And I'll do a separate video on all of my little bra accessories that help, you know, aid, that will help aid in getting the most comfortable, perfect fit for your uh, bra and your boobs. And the second part of that is not having enough hooks in the back of your bra. If you have larger breasts, you want to make sure that you do not have one hook or two hooks. You have to have at least three hooks, preferably four or five, depending on how large your breasts are. Now, mistake number three is choosing a bra that does not minimize your bust and also it doesn't have built-in support. And so something like this, again, I'm going to go back to this little, you know, cheapy bra, trying to buy your bras out of like Ross or Marshalls and things like that, that's not going to cut it. Now this bra, you know, you may be able to fit your boobs in it, but it's flimsy. It doesn't have any kind of breast minimizer in it to kind of, you know, pull everything together because you need to harness these boobs. Like mom boobs are unwieldy. They're just loose and just all over the place. So you need something to just kind of scoop them up from the back scoop them up from the bottom and pull them all together and hold them up here and then also you want to have some built-in support because we don't have any muscle mass or density inside you know our of our breast any longer you want to find a bra that has that built in it or created inside the bra and for example this bra here i guess i should have put it on a hanger it has exactly what I'm talking about let me kind of try to show you you might be wondering why in the world if you have boobs that big would you need padding or anything like that isn't it going to make you look bigger well this particular bra actually minimizes and smooths everything out at the same time but if you look inside this bra now can you see down here in the bottom of the bra there's some extra support and cushion and that is perfect for us with mom boobs because it gives us that extra lift and firmness that we need there because we've lost that after having children we've lost all of that firmness so it kind of beefs up and gives us some support and on the sides of this it comes in and it minimizes the sides and it pulls everything together this is one of my favorite favorite bras and I will get to you later in the segment give you the names the links and descriptions of all the bras that I absolutely love now mistake number four are the what I call the cone boobs or the Madonna boobs or even the grandma boobs and you know what I'm talking about it's those bras they look like you know just 
white hospital bras that have a real pointy cone on the front of it. It makes your breasts look like just two big cones. They just stick out. They're like the grandma bra. And you don't want that either. You don't want to have like pointy cones. And then it also has like all of this, um, what do you call it? Um, stitching and boning and lines all around it so it doesn't give you a smooth effect. You want to make sure that you get a nice rounded bra. It gives you a nice round smooth effect. You don't see any lines or anything like that. It's just a perfectly smooth rounded um, boob inside your bra. You want like a t-shirt bra. You don't want them little pointy cones at the end of your breast. Nah, that doesn't look good. You want it to be nice and round and smooth. Almost makes you look fertile. Like, hmm, look at that lady. Lady look good, lady look good. <laughs> Mistake number five when selecting bras is selecting bras that have too many decorative elements on them. When you're purchasing a bra just to wear for every day under your clothing, you want to just keep it simple. You want it to just be smooth and, you know, no lumps and bumps, no lace, no boning, none of that extra stuff. You just want it to just be a plain bra that's going to lift, minimize, and pull you in so you can look really good in your clothing. You want to save all of that fancy stuff where it has, you know, frills and bows and lace and boning all on it. Save that for the bedroom. Your everyday bras are going to be plain Jane because they're there to do a job. They're there to lift you up and make you look good in your clothing. Now, mistake number six is leavage. Yes, I said leavage, not cleavage, but leavage. And why is it called leavage? It's because you need to leave that mess at home. And you might still be wondering, hey, very Carrie, what is leavage? Leavage is that like a uh, long butt crack titty that someone thought was cute to show the world. No, you do not want to have that long crack going down the middle of your chest, your boobs all the way down here, and you're going out thinking you're doing hot stuff. Now hold it, hold it. I know I'm probably going to get ripped a new one in the comments because you're going to say I'm boob shaming and people should be able to do what they want. But the truth of the matter is your girlfriend, your mom, your husband, your sister, somebody should have pulled you aside and sent you the memo and told you that leavage is not the move. Now, I can show you or share with you some other ways to pull that chest up because we all do want to feel, you know, sexy and look good, but we just do not want that long, flat, butt crack titty going on. I don't even know if I can say titty on YouTube. Hopefully I don't get a strike, but I want to drive home the point. Please leave the leavage at home. So the next mistake, mistake number seven, is spillage. So I moved over here in front of the mirror so that you guys could kind of see what I'm talking about. Now I put on the tightest shirt that I could find. It's a little too small, but I wanted to be able to convey the message without basically being naked to show you. Now spillage is when the cups of your bra does not fit the entire circumference of your breast and you have like meat just hanging out of the top like spilling out over the top and that creates you know like a lumpy boob if you will you don't want a lumpy boob you want to make sure that everything is you know contained inside the bra so if you look closely at my bra let me see if i can get the right thing there is no like this is the tightest shirt that i could find but you don't see any lumps or you know any of my breast hanging out, it fits perfectly around my entire boob, everything. You don't have anything spilling out underneath the underwire. Everything is captured and pulled up and pulled together. And that's exactly how you want your bras to, um, you know, to look. Now let's recap on what a properly fitting bra should look like. First, it should properly lift you up. 
Secondly, I tried to just put a bra on top of my shirt so I could uh, reiterate this point. The second point when you're trying to get a properly fitted bra, this part in the middle should lie flat against your chest. If you can see that should, if you can see here, it is completely flat against my chest, allowing my breast to fill the cups. If that's protruding out your breasts are going to fall they're going to sag so you want to make sure that you have a proper fit here also as we talked about the back we want to make sure that the back is straight across and not pulled up we want to make sure that the straps are not too loose and not too tight so we want to be able to just stick a fingers width underneath there and then we also want to make sure that our boob lands between our shoulder and our elbow. It should be halfway between. So as you can see, my boob is right there in that range. So if your boob is still down here somewhere, you need to get something that lifts you up a little bit higher. So now that I've shared the uh, common mistakes that we make when selecting a bra and how to correct them, I'm now going to share with you some of my absolute favorite bras for almost any occasion. My absolute favorite go-to bra of all time has to be by the brand Elami. Hopefully I'm pronouncing this, um, pronouncing the name right. And this is what the tag looks like so that you could see the brand. Okay, can you see that? It's called Elami. So you can see the brand there. And it is the Elami Bijou, B-I-J-O-U, Deep Plunge T-shirt bra. And that is the bra that I am wearing now. So you can actually see how it looks on. And this is a powerhouse. It will take you from here to here. I promise you. I can't show you a visual because my husband will flip his wig but trust me it, it it pulls you up this is my favorite favorite bra of all time and it also has that deep plunge here so it can be a t-shirt bra where you see no lumps and bumps like i uh, stated earlier but also if you wanted to wear a more revealing type of top because it has that deep plunge it gives you nice cleavage not leavage but cleavage and this particular bra actually separates your cleavage so it's not like that bunched up together you know uh roger what was her name on roger rabbit uh the little roger rabbit lady that had her cleavage pushed all the way up it doesn't do that it gives you just a slight separation where your boobs are lifted and you know the line is not touching if you like that touching effect i will show you my next favorite bra but this one right here i like because it gives me the you know best of both worlds it's three in one it, it's a t-shirt bra so it smooths it it smooths it minimizes it also has a deep plunge so i can you know have cleavage if i want to and it's also a convertible bra meaning in the back if you have a racer back or something like that if you can see this hook here and this hook over here, you can pull it together and wear different types of dresses that may have a different type of back style. So again, this bra runs 70 bucks, but it is well worth every penny. And it will last on average about six years. I've had my previous one and here it is. As you can see, it's kind of all ripped up along the edge. And I've had this bra right here for about nine or ten years but i still keep it it started to wear out around year six but i use it as kind of like a workout bra or a bra that i just kind of lounge around in the house i just cannot part with it so i use it when i'm not trying to go out for the day i typically work out in this bra but this was an absolute great find and i own an I own this bra in a black color and in the nude color. And here's another quick tip. If you are in the process of trying to lose weight, I would suggest that you only buy two bras. Don't go try to buy a bra for every single day because over time you're going to lose that weight and you may go down in a cup size and your bandwidth will need to be adjusted. So two bras would suffice. And another quick tip is that you don't need to wash your bra every single time you wear it. And what you should do is just rotate your bras and I'm going to show you how to care for your bras a little bit later in this video. But for right now, 
that was my number one bra choice. My second favorite bra is this bra right here. And it's by the brand Olga. Let's see if you could see that. And it's called the Olga Flirty. It's the Olga Flirty Deep Plunge Bra. And my second favorite bra is this bra right here. And let me see if you can see that. It's called the Olga. Oops. It's called the Olga Flirty Deep Plunge Bra. And as you can see on here, I have the incorrect size. It's a 38 triple D. And remember earlier I said I always thought I was a 38 triple D because the cup size fit. Well, this particular bra, they are discontinuing it and they no longer have the size that I need. But I know that I am the cup size, a 38 triple D. So what I'm going to do is have it tailored. I'm going to have the bandwidth adjusted so that it could actually, you know, fit properly on my body. But this bra here, if you want some cleavage, not leavage, this will give you what you're looking for and more. And this one will push your babies up and push them together. If you like your cleavage to touch, like the two breasts to actually touch, this is going to give you that lady in Roger Rabbit it's going to give you that kind of look. I really like that. And this is the bra that also I was showing earlier in the leopard print, but it has that extra padding inside for your flat, lifeless boobs to give you that extra support and pump you up. This is the perfect bra, but I doubt if you could find it. You can find a few of them on Amazon. They used to sell them in Kohl's and JCPenney's, but Again, like I said, this is being discontinued, but I'll leave an Amazon link below and you can kind of see if you could find your size in this bra. And that's what I did. I went out and tried to find all the 38 triple D's that I could find so I could have them adjusted because I do not want this bra to uh, go out of style. I want to keep it in my arsenal forever. Okay, the third bra I have is this bra right here. And this one's not a padded bra, it is an underwire bra. It, it's kind of thicker, but it's, you know, loose. It's a lot more loose than the padded uh, type bras, but it does, you know, hold you up and things like that. I would recommend this one for uh, people with larger breasts, but they have more denser breasts not you know just completely lifeless boobs like uh you know i have the mom boobs because you know it doesn't have as much you know give and support and things like that but if you have a nice large dense boob that was boob this would be the perfect bra for you and it doesn't give you that cleavage look it's just a full coverage bra that's going to lift you and smooth you and it definitely minimizes uh your bust so I love this bra and it's by the maker, you can see that, I think it's called Fairform. Oops. And it's by the maker Fairform. Can you see that Fairform? This is a great bra and again, I'll leave the link for this bra in the description box below. And this is my absolute favorite convertible bra. This is a this bra can be a strapless bra. You can have it with the two straps. You can put it across and make you know one strap. It's depending on depending on what type of outfit you're wearing. This is the perfect bra for those of us that have large breasts. And this is by the brand. And this is by the brand Waco. And I'll give the model number and description and everything in the description box below. But this bra is the truth. I thought I would never be able to wear strapless things because, you know, my breasts are, again, they're just lifeless, long, and they're hard to hold up, especially without a strap. I really need this strap for that extra support to kind of pull the girls up. But because it has like a little like silicone banding inside the band it kind of stays in place and holds you up it provides that support love 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 this bra now most all these bras that i've shared with you are about 70 dollars a piece again i know that's expensive start off with two bras and then slowly build your collection up Mother's Day is right around the corner, so you can ask for a good fitting bra for Mother's Day. 
but you want to make sure that your foundation is right before you can get your clothing to fit right. And so now I'm going to briefly talk about how you can take care of your bras because if you're going to spend this kind of money on bras, you want to make sure that they last you know, a long time and you're taking care of them properly. The first thing you want to do is get a mesh lingerie bag and you can pick these up for about a dollar out of Walmart. You can also get them from the Dollar Tree and you're not going to get the little bra balls or the bra shapers that you can kind of wash your uh, bras in because when you have breasts as large as ours, they're not going to fit. Those bras are not going to fit in those little, you know, um, bra pods for the laundry. So you're going to get something like this. This is huge and this will fit our bras neatly inside. Now you don't need to buy the $20 bra wash that they'll try to sell you at the lingerie shop. You can just use something gentle and you can even use what you already have at home. The number one key is that you don't want to put your bras in the dryer. You will wash them, but you're going to air dry them. You don't want to break down the elasticity and the things that make up the bra to keep and help support you because if you dry it, it's going to shorten the lifespan of your bra and the next tip remember I told you you should rotate your bras and that's exactly what you need to do so you don't want to wash your bra every single time you wear it and if you're just starting off trying to invest in you know new higher quality bras I would suggest you get two bras a nude color and a black color then you can move on to some of the more fun prints I wouldn't necessarily buy like reds and greens and purples and things like that because then you may be limited to what you can wear underneath because they may show through your clothing. But once you get your basic colors down, you can move into whatever direction you want to. So what do I mean when you shouldn't wash your bra every single time? You're like probably thinking, but Carrie, I have really big boobs and I sweat profusely under here. I know all about that. That boob sweat is something serious. But here's what you want to do. You want to take your bra, you want to get a little bottle. I bought a new one just to show you guys. You can get this out of Walmart. It's just a little Equate sprayer bottle. You want to fill it half with white vinegar and half with water. And at the end of each night, this is where, oops, I messed up. Okay, at the end of the day, at the end of the night, under here, it's mostly where all the sweat has collected underneath your boob, like right around the wire of the bra. What you want to do is take your spray bottle and just mist the vinegar and water solution all along the inside of the bra if your whole boob sweats, but definitely along the outer edges of the bra. Just mist it and spray it and let it hang. And that way the uh, vinegar kills the bacteria, all of the bacteria that builds up underneath your breast because your breast is moist. It stays moist and that's a breeding ground for yeast infections and things like that. Yes, you can get a yeast infection under your boob. So again, I will also be following up this video with a boob care video. This video here was just sharing how to lift those babies up and look you know presentable underneath your clothing but there is a specific way you should be taking care of your boobs and this will help all of my younger viewers and older viewers if they'd like to see something like that I'm going to do an entire boob care video because the summer months are coming and that's when all that boob sweat and everything you know comes about but what I'm going to do, I'm going to start putting my hygiene type videos and things like that. I've, I've kind of abandoned my Tommy's online channel a little bit over the past year or so. But what I think I want to do is move all of my content that's going to relate to hygiene, periods, things like that, sex, all over to the Tommy's online channel so that I could help those young girls and then also you viewers you know can go over there and get information on hygiene and things like that but also it'll be a tool that you can watch and also help your young girls when you want to talk to them about these subjects and you don't know how to uh, explain these types of things to them they can watch the videos and things like that and so for my newer subscribers that have no idea what is she talking about her time Tommy's online channel. I invented a um, leak-proof period panty called Tommy's 
about two years ago and Tommy stands for time of the month panties and basically what these panties uh, do they work in conjunction with your period product of choice your pad tampon or menstrual cup and basically you put them on and you can sleep roll around do all kinds of things in the middle of the night and don't have to worry about messing up your sheets you can put them on right before you think you may be starting your cycle but you don't know when it's going to creep up on you so if you're in school and you start your cycle you're good to go you're not going to be embarrassed or anything like that because the tommy's panties can be worn alone for a while they're not meant to substitute you know a pad or a tampon but if you start to leak it will hold a significant amount of, um, you know, period uh, menstrual blood. Our panties also have a pocket in the front so that you can put a disposable heating pad in there. My youngest daughter had awful cramps and she was missing several days of school each month and she couldn't take a, you know, heating pad to school. So now I have developed a uh, disposable heating pad that she can crack open in the morning, shake, stick inside of her pocket and it'll last for up to eight hours. So she loves that. And also the little pocket, for girls that are in school that are still kind of concerned, how do I sneak a pad to the bathroom in school? You can just put all your little pads, tampons in your little pocket in the morning and you're good to go. No one will know that you have them there. So check out my Tommy's online channel. Go over there and subscribe so that you can start getting all of the videos related to hygiene, health, period, sex, dating, boys, all of that stuff. We'll be talking about that over on that channel. And if you're interested in ordering a pair of Tommies, I will also leave the link to my Tommies website in the description box below. Also be sure to check the description box for all of the products and bras that I shared with you today. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, I'm going to keep calm and carry on. Bye guys.